In our first session, we talked about three kinds of wounds, right? A trauma, B trauma, C trauma, the uh, absence of the good things we needed, the bad stuff that happens to us, and wounds of comparison or perception. And I th all of these are things that need, may need to be forgiven in your life. For example, if you realize that, wow, I really didn't get the skills I needed when I was a child. My, nobody did a good job of validating and comforting me when I was overwhelmed that may be something you need to forgive. You, and I know in my life, I've had to go back and forgive my parents for things that they didn't give me. Um, I know it wasn't their fault. They would have given it to me if they could, but they didn't have it to give. But it still created a wound for me that had to be overcome. And, I, and so I've gone through and said, God, I choose to forgive them for not giving me everything I, I really needed. So you may have to forgive a trauma. Um, B trauma, of course, it can be as simple as a tone of voice that makes you feel shame or makes you feel criticized when you don't think you deserve it, right? I can't tell you how many times in our marriage, right? I've gotten a, a, a tone of voice that has triggered me and it's meant something to me that it wouldn't, didn't necessarily mean from my wife, but I still need to forgive because of the reaction that it creates in me. There, uh, and that brings us to the idea of perception or, or comparison, and that is you may need to forgive people's um, not because they've specifically wronged you, but just because of the perception of what they are doing to you and the consequences they are creating for you. And this can happen at a cultural level. It can happen at a political level. It can happen at a personal level. It can happen in a lot of ways where, where we have to forgive people um, because our perception of that reality or our comparison with what's going on has got us feeling like we have been traumatized by them, that we have been put, you know, made to be less than we are. So wherever there is pain, basically, what we're doing is we're looking and saying, all right, who is responsible for this pain? And whether they mean to cause it or not, I want to forgive them because I don't want to stay relationally, emotionally chained to this person. I want to live in freedom and I want to walk forward to this with this in the, all of the grace that God can give me. Several years ago, I had one of those encounters that you don't forget easily. Uh, a man had scheduled an appointment to meet with me as a pastoral counselor, and you never know what people are going to talk about. In this case, he was an ex-Marine, and shortly into the, the visit, he confessed that he had a plan to kill someone with the comment that it ain't murder if they can't find a body. And very quickly, I was like, wow, I think I may be in over my head. This is pretty deep. Um, but we stayed with it, let him process, and he followed that statement up with another one where he said, and don't try to get me to forgive this person, right? A lot of other counselors have. There's no way. He said to him, forgiveness meant they get away with it. There are no consequences. There's no punishment, you know, that uh, you pretend it never happened. So I opened up Neil Anderson, Steps to Freedom in Christ, and we turn to step number three that talks about the difference between bitterness and, and forgiveness. And there it says, all of us have to live with the consequences of what has happened to us. We have no choice. It's already happened. It, you know, it's already there. The question is, are we going to live with the consequences in the bondage of bitterness or in the freedom of forgiveness? And I was able to explain to this man that the issue of justice that he was hung up on was really not a question of justice, but a question of whose job is justice. And that is, is it God's job to make sure that justice happens to this man, or is it your job to make sure that justice happens? And as we process through, he began to understand that choosing to forgive didn't mean pretending it never happened. It didn't mean let's just go on as if nothing ever went on. It is handing the job of justice over to God and it is then seeking from God what steps he may want me to take. And I can guarantee you, God's not telling you to go kill him, right? So here's the thing. What is it that God wants me to do in this situation? So I'm going to give the task to him. I'm going to hand it over to God, say, justice is yours. You guide me in what you want me to do. And he, that made sense to him. It clicked. He ended up forgiving. He said he felt much lighter when he left the office. And uh, I felt very relieved. So it was one of those moments you don't uh, forget very, uh, very quickly. But uh, it also brings to my mind this question of, well, what is forgiveness and what isn't it? What, what do you expect from it? What don't you expect from it? In fact, it reminds me of uh, one of my favorite quotes I've had through the years, which is uh, that um, bitterness is like drinking poison and hoping the other person dies. Right? It's not a very effective life strategy. 
And I, I look at this and think um, a lot of people think that forgiving is the key to all of their healing. And they think if I just forgive correctly, then all of my pain will go away and all the consequences will go away and everything will get better. And I've got people who have gone through the process of forgiving someone who've come back and said, you know, I still have pain about this. I don't think I forgave correctly. And I often remind them, you know, they aren't the same thing, right? We have at least four tools we're talking about here uh, related to emotional healing and forgiveness is just one of them. And there's a, a lot more that goes into the resolution of all of these things, but forgiveness has an important role to play. And so we understand that there is a, a difference. For example, forgiveness is not the same as forgetting. And this can happen in two directions. For instance, sometimes people say, well, I haven't thought about that in a long time, so I must have forgiven. But that doesn't mean you've forgiven, it just means you've buried it, right? There's a big difference between burying a problem and forgiving a problem. In fact, I had somebody illustrate it this way. They got out a bowl of water and they put a bunch of ping pong balls in the water and they were like, now hold them down, right? You know, press them down and keep those ping pong balls from coming. I mean, you could see that the, uh, you know, there was no way, no matter how much they did this, that they were gonna be able to keep all those balls from coming to the surface. But that's what a lot of us do with issues that we choose to keep buried rather than forgive. Instead of removing the ping pong ball, right, and handing it to God, we're just doing our best to keep the thing buried so we don't think about it. But that's not forgiving. It's the forgiveness and forgetting are not the same thing. Secondly, forgiveness is not the same thing as reconciliation. Right? Forgiveness is, takes one person. It is between me and God in which I am making the choice to cancel the debt that you owe me because of the pain that you have caused me. Or it is my choice between me and God to cancel the debt that somebody else because of what they've done. And uh, whereas reconciliation takes two. So forgiveness takes one, reconciliation takes two. And the idea here is it reminds me of a, of a man who uh, had confessed to an affair and he told his wife that he had had an affair and his expectation was that once he confessed that her job as a Christian was to simply forgive him and then to pretend that nothing had happened and go on. He literally, a friend of mine uh, who was called to the situation to, to meet with the couple was just shocked when he got to the, the home and the husband met him at the door and said, thank God you're here, Pasher. Would you tell my wife to start acting like a Christian? which, you know, thoroughly confused my friend. And he was like, well, uh, what do you mean? And he said, well, I told her I was sorry. You know, we should just put this whole mess behind us and pretend it never happened. This guy wasn't looking for forgiveness. He was looking for instant reconciliation. And reconciliation is about the process of rebuilding trust and reestablishing trust in a relationship. And it is more than just forgiveness. So for example, some people think that if I forgive, it means there should be no consequences. But every parent knows that that isn't true, right? If you're a parent, you forgive your child for what they do, but you still know that you need to give them consequences or they're not going to learn. In a similar way, <clears throat> I know of a, of a lady whose husband had, had done some really uh, a, a pattern of addictive behavior and, and, and unacceptable things in their marriage where she finally though she forgave him, still kicked him out of the house. And her choice to do that actually led her husband to go get the help that he needed so that their marriage ultimately got restored. So the idea it, it, that forgiveness means there are no consequences and that we just pretend nothing happened isn't true either. Forgiveness is not instant reconciliation. It is one step in the whole reconciliation process. And uh, a third thing about what forgiveness is and isn't is about emotion. Sometimes we think that uh, forgiveness is about feeling a certain emotion. And so we say things like, I don't think I'm ready to forgive, right? I don't think I, I'm there yet. And what I'm saying with those words is, I don't feel like forgiving, so maybe I would be a hypocrite to do it. But you're never a hypocrite to obey, right? It's never hypocrisy to obey God. Right? Hypocrisy is when you disobey God and then pretend that you are obeying him. Right? There's a, a, a big difference here. And when we talk about emotions and forgiveness, the reality is that forgiveness is much more of a business transaction than an emotional transaction. And that is it has to do with um, canceling a permission that has been given to the enemy in the courtroom of heaven so that you know, we are saying in a very legal sense, no more permission to be here. I am choosing to forgive this person. I am canceling the permission that I've given to the enemy. So 
it isn't just an emotion that we feel. And if we wait till we feel the emotion, we often won't forgive. On the other hand, I've had numerous people that I have prayed with along these lines, and that is, God, I choose to forgive this person for doing this thing and making me feel this way, even though I don't understand, right? And that is just because, even though I don't get it, even though I still have pain, I'm gonna make the choice to be obedient and to forgive. And afterwards, most of those people have reported feeling a lot different after they did it, rather than, and, and that order is very important. We, uh, if we wait till we have the feelings before we forgive, we often won't do it. But conversely, many times once we forgive, the feelings will follow um, in, in time. Last uh, difference between, you know, uh, of what forgiveness really is and isn't has to do with um, the idea of an explanation or an excuse. The idea that if I can explain away their behavior, then I can forgive them. It's like if I, understand, well, if you understand their childhood, you can see why they did this. Now I can forgive. You don't have to be able to understand what they did. You don't have to be able to justify what they did. You don't have to be able to come up with an excuse for them because the very essence of forgiveness is that they owe you, right? They owe you. So if I explain it away, then in a sense, it's like they owe me less, right? If I'm going to forgive, I want to make sure I forgive the whole amount and not just a little bit of it. It's like if uh, I, I had somebody explain, um, explain it this way. He said, if a, if a husband has been lost a, you know, a hundred thousand dollars gambling and he comes home and he tells his wife that he lost $10,000 gambling and she forgives him for the $10,000 he lost, but he's actually lost a hundred thousand. It's going to be much harder now for her to forgive the rest, isn't it? Because he just lied about, the, about that. In the same way, we don't need to, you know, minimize what has happened to us in order to make it easier to forgive. Sometimes we need to, to give it the full weight of what has happened. And in giving it the full weight of what has happened, we're saying, I am choosing to forgive the entire debt here and not just a portion of it. So when we look at this, we say, you know, it's not just healing. It's not just forgetting. It's not just reconciling. It's not just, you know, uh, having certain emotions or explaining things away. But what we've already alluded to is that forgiveness is canceling a debt. In fact, in, in the uh, most common passage on forgiveness in the New Testament is Matthew 18, which is the parable of the unmerciful servant, right? Who owes his master a great deal of money. The master forgives him a huge debt, but he goes out and will not forgive somebody who owes him a small debt. And in the end, what happens is the master says, since you would not extend the same mercy that I showed you, I'm throwing you over to what the Bible calls the tormentors. In fact, the NIV calls it to be tortured, which I think is an appropriate terminology because oftentimes when we don't forgive other people, we're the ones who end up tormented, right? Our lack of forgiveness can end up with us being handed over to, you know, the devil and his demons for our own torment. And God wants to free us from that. He wants us to be set free from that. So one of the common Greek words for forgiveness in the Bible is the word loose. That is, I loose this person. So the idea when I cancel the debt, I am loosing them, which creates the idea of being given a key by God by which you can unlock the chains that keep you bound to this other person through bitterness. Um, my mom, from about age 65 to age 85, uh, led probably 400 women through the process of going through Neil Anderson's Steps to Freedom in Christ. Uh, she often with that would meet with them you know, for uh, uh, multiple days over multiple weeks. And she always took them through this step on forgiveness. And one of the things that she would do is she would ask the person, you know, close your eyes. When you think about the person you need to forgive, do you sense any chains between you? And she said, I was surprised how many of these women would say, I not only sense them, I can actually see them. It's like when I close my eyes and I think about it, I see the chains connecting me to this person that I, that I need to forgive. And she would tell them, forgiveness is God's gift to you. It is a key that you can use to unlock these chains that have you bound to this other person in bitterness. And she would walk them through making the choice to forgive the person for what they had done, take those chains and hand them over to God and saying, God, this is now yours to deal with. I am loosing them. So we say, what is forgiveness? This is what it looks like. And you're like, well, and how do we do this? So let's walk through this process. So you say, okay, you've convinced me. I need to forgive somebody. How do I do this? 
So I, I look at it, um, the Bible says to forgive from our hearts, which means we need to get in touch with the emotions of what's going on and not just make this an intellectual exercise. Though I will say it's better to do it intellectually than not at all, but it's a starting point. We wanna to get to the point where we are in touch with our emotions. And that is, uh, so we pray, God, I choose to forgive blank and put in the name for doing blank and put in the deed and making me feel blank and put in the emotion. And you may even put down another one beyond that, and that is for creating the, the following consequences, right? And that is they, this person did this to me, made me feel this way, and created these consequences in my life. And one of the benefits of doing that is I, I am now choosing to forgive them for what they did. I'm choosing to forgive them for how they made me feel, and I'm choosing to forgive them for all the consequences they created in my life. And that's the essential thing, okay? It is choosing to cancel the debt. Once I've done that, I've gotten through that prayer, I like to tie it in a knot, so to speak, and I sometimes think of ABC with this about how I tie it in a knot, and that is I will then pray a prayer, lead the person in a prayer like this. God, I choose to, I accept, it is the A, I accept the consequences because I have no choice, right? It's only a question of whether I'm gonna live with them in bitterness or in freedom. So God, I agree to live with the consequences of what has happened to me in the, in the, with your grace, with the help of your grace, trusting that you can work all things together for my good, right? So I'm going to say, I agree to live with these consequences and the freedom of forgiveness, trusting your grace that you can work all things together for my good. Then B is, I'll walk them through a prayer to bless, say, pray a blessing on the person who has wronged them. And I find that many times this is harder for a person than choosing to forgive. <laughs> and I often will tell them, well, I'm not asking you to pray that they win the lottery, right? We just want to know, you know, pray that blessing just means pray for something good in their life. Can you think of anything good you would like to see happen to them? And if they can't, I'll make suggestions like, well, are they Christians? You know, would it be a, would you like to see them get saved and give their life to Christ? And like, oh, let's pray for that. Or are they themselves in bondage? Do they have areas where they need to be free? Do they have wounds that need to be healed? Can you pray for those? And so we pray a prayer of blessing on the person that God would do some good thing in their life to kind of confirm the forgiveness that's just happened. And then the, uh, the C is what I call uh, committing things to the, the kingdom of God collection agency. And it's the idea, I've canceled the debt, but that doesn't mean they don't owe God. So I'm saying, God, I canceled the debt they owe me, but I'm handing that over to you. You're now the collector. If there is any debt to collect, you be in charge of that. I'm handing justice over to you. And I found that those, that's a really nice follow-up to the initial prayer on choosing to forgive those who have wronged us. So walking through this, I, I uh, several years ago, I had uh, opportunity to speak at a church and they they scheduled for me to come in a few days early so that I could meet with uh, some of the uh, families in their church that were struggling with some issues and I remember I, I met with one couple and uh, again there had been an affair in their marriage and and we walked through a, a beautiful time of kind of them choosing to for, to give and deciding they were going to stay together and the wife um, said prayed a beautiful prayer of forgiveness and felt very you know free and light afterwards but I came back a year later and the same couple scheduled an appointment, another appointment. And this time she's like, I don't think I did that right. I'm like, well, what makes you think that? And she said, well, you know, I, I feel just as burdened now as I did before I forgave last year. And it was at that point we started exploring and going, well, what has you burdened now? Is it the actual affair? And she said, you know, not not really. As I think about it, it's all of the consequences that it has created for me. I now have to live with, with my family looking at me like this. I need to li live with people thinking about me differently. I have to learn to live with this consequence and this one and this one. I'm like, well, that's quite a list. So we wrote that down as a list and she went one by one through that list and she chose to forgive for each one of those and her peace returned and her joy began to, to, to return as she not only um, forgave for the original offense, but she forgave for the consequences that it had created for her. And I found that that's a very helpful practice as we're continuing to move into this area of how do I forgive those who have wronged me? And I believe that forgiveness really is an act of obedience in which we are entrusting our pain to God, asking him to take care of justice 
and trusting that he really can work all things together for good and that he promises to do so. So as we go into our last session, I uh, trust that uh, you will experience God's joy and his peace in increasing measure as you go deeper in your walk with him.